Hello everyone, welcome back to our course. I am your instructor, Sir Said. Welcome to Psychopharmacology. So what is this all about? So I would like to start this lesson by a quote by William Wordsworth. The human mind is capable of excitement without the application of gross and violent stimulants. And he must have a very faint perception of its beauty and dignity. Who does not know this? So going back, it's important for us to really realize that our body is not designed to have the substances inside of us, inside our system. We should always try to think that we live, we are born, and we can live without the use of this substances because our body naturally produces these kinds of substances and neurotransmitters no and hormones no perhaps so therefore it's not good to always be dependent and rely on these substances for us to experience what is life so i would like to start by defining psychopharmacology it is the use of medications in treating mental this Ill illnesses or disorders so this is a field in psychology also in medication wherein the studies focus on the effects of drugs on our mood, sensation, thinking, and behavior. Clinical psychopharm psychopharmacology is a professionally recognized specialty field within clinical psychology dedicated to the study and the therapeutic use of psychotropic medication. Later on, let's define what is a psychotropic medication. Okay. I, actually, this term is an umbrella term for a lot of different drugs, psychotropic med medication that includes prescription drugs and commonly misused drugs. So, um, it is, of course, you are trying to understand the action of drugs into your brain, into your body. How does it function? What are the effects? And also the side effects of different drugs in your body. Okay, let's first proceed and let's now differentiate what are neurotransmitters, neuromodulators, okay, and neurohormones. So neurotransmitters are substances, these are the chemical messengers that are released by one cell at the synapse that produce a reaction in target cell. So a neuromodulator is a, are also chemical messengers that act on, on neurons somewhat farther away by diffusing away from their site of release. No? While your hormones are capable of producing effects at target cells quite distant from their site of release. So you can see that the difference here is where it is being released. No? What part or where it actually means released. Okay, we have here the different uh, types of neurotransmitters. You can actually see here the categories of neurotransmitters, neuromodulators, and neurohormones. I hope you can st study more onto this. Here are the sample neurotransmitters. We have acetylcholine, dopamine, norepinephrine, serotonin, glutamate, GABA, ATP, endorphins, and so on and so forth. You could, actually, you could also see the functions of every neurotransmitter and the location where it is being released. Dopamine is a major monoamine and catecholamine. Neurotransmitter that is implicated in motor control, reward, and psychosis. So this is known as the reward neurotransmitter or the pleasure neurotransmitter. Norepinephrine is a major monoamine and catecholine neurotransmitter. Epinephrine is one of the monoamine and catecholine neurotransmitter is also known as adrenaline. No? Serotonin is a major monoamine and endo endolenomine neurotransmitter believed to participate in the regulation of mood sleep and appetite we are i think familiar with this neurotransmitters we also have glutamate and gaba or gamma aminobutyric acid a psychotropic drug describes any drug that affects behavior mood thoughts or perception okay so this is an umbrella term for different types of drugs no it is consists of both prescriptive drugs and commonly misused drugs. Psychoactive drugs naman are substances that are when taken in or administered into one system can affect our mental processes. So example of psychoactive drugs are alcohol, caffeine, nicotine, marijuana, and certain pain medicines. So another form or types of psychotropic drugs are we have psychedelics. 
These are known as hallucinogens. So these are a class of psychoactive drugs that produces changes in perception, mood, and cognitive processes. Now, it can also produce hallucinations. Okay, example of this are cocaine, uh, methamphetamine, okay, those kinds of drugs. Anti-anxiety agents, antidepressants, antipsychotics, mood stabilizers, and stimulants. So these are psychotropic drugs that are used for treating mental health illnesses. So these are actually um, treatment medications for persons having psychological disorders. So here are some of examples. So Sanax is actually a brand name. Please be familiar with this. No, Sanax is the brand name. And Alfrazolam is a generic name. Sanax is a very common anti-anxiety medication, usually being um, prescribed in, in the U.S. or in Western countries. We also have clon clonopin or clonazepam as its generic name and Valium or diazepam or its generic name. Antidepressants naman, I believe the most familiar or the most common being given is escitalopram. Okay, Lexapro is its... Um, generic name. Ah, no, 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 no. Sorry, sorry. It is um, Lexapro is the brand name and Escitalopram is the generic name. Also, we have Fluxotin, Paroxetin, Sertraline, and Citalopram. Those are the generic names. And the brand names are we have Prozac, Paxil, Zoloft, Celexa, Lexapro. Okay. And for treating OCD, we have here um, clomiframin, floxetin, flovoxamine, paroxetin, and sertraline. I sometimes recognize that the treatment that they have for antidepressants or for those that have depressive disorders are also being used for people with OCD. Okay, antipsychotics naman is we have haldol with the generic name of haloperidol, loxapin, Tyroxidacin and molindone. Okay, these are used for people having psychotic symptoms or disorders. For mood stabilizers naman, we have carmazepine. No? This is also or being used for people who have seizures disorder or having epilepsy. No, We also have depakote and lamictal. Um, those that have the brand names are we have um, Tegretol, Equetro, Bifalfroex, and Lamotrigine. Okay, and for stimulant medication for people who have mental illnesses, no, these are usually used for people who have ADHD for children. No, the most common one is we have Adderall. And for people who have narcolepsy, ito naman yung um, daytime drowsiness. No, so ito naman that the the certain med medications being used or or provided are we have Provigil and Nufigil. Okay, I hope you can be familiar with these kinds of medications for treating mental illnesses. Many drugs produce their psychoactive effects through actions at the synapse. So drugs affects the synthesis of neurotransmitters, the storage of it, and and of course, the release or reuptake or enzyme activity following its release and interactions with either the pre or postsynaptic receptor sites. So it really affects how the neurotransmitters being transported, stored, being transferred into your uh, brain, no? into your uh, receptor sites. Agonist versus antagonist. So let's define or let's differentiate these two kinds of drugs. Agonist is a drug that can bind to the receptor that produces a similar response. So this boost no, and enhances the activity of the neurotransmitter, agonist. An antagonist is a drug or antag sorry, it's antagonist is a drug that binds to the receptor site either on the primary site or on another site. This uh, helps stop the receptor from producing a response. So this reduces the activity of a neurotransmitter that is antagonist. Okay? These are both involved in drug action. How does agonist and antagonist work together? You can actually see this figure here. You can see the process of how it works or how it actually processes no, 
in the receptor sites. Placebo, the placebo effect is the term that they used as a perceived benefit from inactive substances or procedures. So this is actually, some people can consider it as like a psychological effect, but there's no actual biological inclination or implication with that. Of how does it, you know, treat people or yung wanted effect ng mga tao. It's what they call this placebo effect. Double bind or double blind experiment is a research design in which neither the participant nor the experimenter knows whether the participant is receiving a drug or a placebo until after the research is concluded. So this is actually can happen or can be done on certain experiments, no? In drug trials, no? They can actually do this whether uh, this medication can actually help the client or not. They give medication towards a person and towards one participant, then another participant, they don't give any medication at all. They want to test if the medication is effective or not. Receptor sites. Okay, let's learn more about this. For receptor sites, this is where the actual transfer okay, of these neurotransmitters happens. A number of important drugs exert their influence on the GABA receptors with a number of different binding sites. So yung GABA, it yung responsible that produces no, yung calmness. This is actually given towards person having anxiety and panic attacks. Okay, um, benzodiazepines. These are a class of, of tranquilizers that includes diazepam alcohol and barbiturates which are used in anesthesia and in the control of seizures actually no i just learned no na you should never ever ipagsabay or take value okay or any benzodiazepine drugs or rivotril with alcohol because it will really um, trigger or it will really worsen the side effect of it. Some people can experience um, coma for many hours or days kapag pinagsabay yung dalawang um, substances na to, alcohol and a tranquilizer or benzodiazepine. Never ever ipagsabay talaga. Barbiturates can single-handedly activate the GABA receptor without any GABA present at all. So, um, both, benzodi the be both benzodiazepines and alcohol increases the receptor's response, like response to GABA, but only when they occupy the binding sites at the same time with the GABA is present. Okay, so just to know the term, benzodiazepine is a major tranquilizer that acts as a GABA agonist. These are like Valium and Rivotril, while barbiturate is a term that they use for for alcohol, no? So that is barbiturate. It is a drug that produces strong sedation by acting as a GABA agonist. Okay, I hope you understand the differences of these two and the importance of these types of substances. How SSRI works? So SSRI treat depression by increasing levels of serotonin in the brain. Serotonin is one of the chemical messengers or neurotransmitters that carry signals between the brain, nerve, cell, or neurons. So this is responsible for your mood. So this is how it actually works. So um, SS SSRI reuptakes no, or it helps inhibit the transfer of serotonin from the presynaptic neuron or sending cell to the postsynaptic neuron or receiving cell. So, hindi niya inaalaw yung pag-transfer ng marami or lahat-lahat. So, it stays within your neuron. Okay, so, in effect, the people can feel the effect of it. Yung chemical messenger na yun. So, hindi nawawala. Hindi siya nabi-waste. Hindi naman lahat-lahat talaga ay kaya niyang i-inhibit. But most of it, ini-inhibit niya. Depende rin sa dosage ng SSRI ninyo or ng person. Again, the function of it is to block the reabsorption or the reuptake of serotonin into neurons. So it stays within the neuron. No, hindi siya not hindi siya gina transfer hindi siya not not a transfer. So mga binding sites. So what is drug addiction? So this is a very sensitive issue, and again, never ever explore or play in drug addiction, illegal drugs 
per se. Drug addiction is a chronic disease characterized by compulsive or uncontrollable drug seeking and use despite the harmful consequences and the brain changes in the brain, which can be long lasting. So drug addiction is a very harmful and can be progressive psychological disorder. This really changes the brain, the structure, the function of the brain. It can lead to harmful behavior seen in people who use drugs. So people who actually use illegal drugs like shabu, marijuana, they are actually um, can really change how they how they see things, how they think. Kaya minsan nakakagawa sila ng mga bagay like kaya nilang makapatay, illegal activities because of the effect of it in their brain. Nawawala na yung natural consciousness of sanity nila. Okay? So drug addiction is also a relapsing disease. So a person who has tried to stop from taking such drugs or illegal drugs can return or can have a relapse or this is a moment of the return to drugs use after an attempt to stop it. So the path of drug addiction begins with a voluntary act of taking drugs. So it always starts with you. So always recognize that there is a problem. Then afterwards, you can go with the intervention program. How can you have that willpower for you to stop and, and overcome the use of drugs? But over time, a person's ability to choose not to do so becomes compromised. Seeking and taking the drug becomes compulsive. You know? This is mostly due to the effects of long-lasting or long-term drug exposure on the brain function. So, hinahanap-hanap na ng brain mo yung ganong klaseng substance. No? Because yun na, it gives pleasure, it activates dopamine receptors, addiction affects parts of the brain involved in the reward and the motivation that is your limbic system. Also, your, your learning and your memory, the hippocampus and control over behavior. So, certain parts in your brain are being uh, affected, no? It can sometimes uh, be long-term, okay, or permanent effect in, in your brain. So, be careful talaga, no? Addiction is a disease that affects both the brain and the behavior. If it is being affected, if it affects your brain, then, then therefore, it will affect, therefore, your behavior as well. Because your mind or your brain will determine your behavior or it affects how you decide things. Tolerance is the process in which more of a drug is needed to produce the same effect. Okay, this happens when you are continuously taking that substance and after some period of time, that amount of substance that, that you take you know, previously won't longer have that similar effect in you. So you try to take more and more for it to have the same effect or your wanted effect sa katawan mo. That's why it happens. Tolerance if you continuously take this and take and take and take. That's why people who are alcoholics, no, they, uh, when they drink every day, the amount of, um, of alcohol they are taking no longer give the same effect or the same wanted effect they want. So they're trying to take more in order to receive and feel the same effect. Withdrawal happens when the symptoms that occur when certain addictive drugs are no longer administered or are administered in smaller quantities. So it can happen when after you have um, gone or you have stopped from using sub this uh, or certain substances, withdrawal effect can really occur with you because your brain has detected that the yung substance na yan hindi na siya present sa brain mo, so nakakaroon siya ng mga withdrawal symptoms or effect. Parang nag rebelde yung brain mo sa'yo. So, it really occurs mostly in addictive drugs like alcohol, um, cigarettes, and other illegal drugs. Principles of effective treatments. So, of course, there is an intervention plan that is needed to be um, based or anchor depending sa case ng client. So, iba-iba yung mga treatment plans. But there are, of course, universal treatment plans for all people who are considered to be addicts or drug addicts. Causes of addiction. A likely base for addiction is the ability of a drug to stimulate our natural neural systems of reward, the mesolimbic system which we experience as feelings of pleasure. Addicted drugs produce a variety of behavioral effects, but many share the ability to stimulate more intense and longer-lasting dopamine release than we typically see in response to, env to environmental events. No, so these are psychoactive drugs, some of the examples. Um, 
we have stimulant drugs, caffeine, okay? A caffeine is a stimulant drug, no? A coffee is still a drug and it is most commonly being abused. The most common type of drugs that is being abused by people. Nicotine is also a, a stimulant drugs. A stimulant drugs has the capacity to increase alertness and mobility, no? <clears throat> we have also cocaine, THC, no? Morphine which are used to really treat pain, opiate, hallucinogens, no, and also LSD. I hope you can read more into this and try to understand the effects of this in your body, in the body. Alcohol is one of the earliest drugs. Alcohol is a sedative form of drug. No, it's unlike a stimulant, but the effect of it is try to calm, activate that GABA receptor, okay, and for sedation. At lower doses, alcohol dilates the blood vessels, providing the warm, flushed feelings. It helps reduce anxiety and promotes assertiveness and reduces behavioral inhibitions, causing people's behavior to be silly or funny. <laughs> now, at higher dosage, however, assertiveness becomes aggressive, and in this, in this inhibition can lead to overtly risky behaviors. Motor coordination drops, leading to the alcohol-induced carnage on streets and highways. So actually, I have really seen people who have drink a lot and they have done a lot of risky things like attacking a house, yung tricycle inaatake niya, sumisigaw-sigaw siya, he runs, she runs, no? patakbo-takbo siya sa kalye, sa mga gate, binabagbang niya yung mga gate, ganun klaseng mga, uh, mga, ganun klaseng mga behavior na hindi niya kayang gawin kung hindi siya nakainom. So, very dangerous and risky, no? Kapag umiinom kayo or when you are drinking, try to be with your friends, no? Try to just go lightly, no? Go, just drink moderately. Hang, kung hanggang saan lang kayo. Huwag niyong pilitin. Or huwag kayong, don't take too much. Okay? Magpira kayo, kumbaga. Yung kaya niya pang umuwi. Yung mga, yung mga ganong klaseng zihin, huwag niyong inumin lahat-lahat. You... Just try to feel in yourself if, if kaya pa at kaya nyo pang umuwi. Okay? Alcohol produces rapid tolerance. One source of tolerance is an increase in the production of liver enzymes that eliminates alcohol from the system. Okay, there are a lot of detrimental effects on health. Okay, of course, alam naman natin yung liver being affected by alcohol. The chronic use of alcohol damages several areas of the brain, including the frontal lobes. There is... This is a proven, guys, that alcohol decreases your IQ, okay? Remember that alcohol decreases your IQ. It is proven to reduce IQ. Alcoholism can lead indirectly to, Corsa, to Korsakoff syndrome. Ito yung, uh, ito yung ability of forming new memories is being impaired. That is Korsakoff syndrome and so much more. These are the classification of drugs according to its effects. We have hallucinogens. Examples, we have psychedelics, dissociative anesthetics. Effects or main effects of this type of drug is distortion in perception, sudden mood change, flashbacks. Effects depend on context of consumption. We have also cannabinoids. This produces euphoria, re 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 relaxation. Example of it are marijuana, hashish. Okay, and so much more. Depressants, this will initially produce this inhibition, uh, central nervous system depression, and so much more examples. We have alcohol, barbiturates, of course, benzodiazepines, and so much more. Stimulants, this will increase alertness, higher energy and mood, decrease appetite. Examples, we have cocaine, amphetamines, methamphetamines, or shabu, and tobacco. Opioids, opioids, we have um, main effects, analgesia. Analgesia naman yung nag reduce ng pain sa katawan. Analgesic, no? Meiosis, weakened or suppressed cough reflex, constipation, re relaxation, and respiratory depression. The some examples, we have opium derivatives, natural synthetic, sure, compounds of similar to morphine, and so much more. Mixtures, as we have the multiple effects, on the involved sub 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 substances so nangyayari make sure kapag pinagsama mo yung dalawang klasing drug example stimulant plus opioids 
or a stimulant plus depressant. Okay, that those kinds of drugs. So multiple effect din siya sa brain. Naghalu-halu na siya. So if you combine cocaine and morphine, no? Also if you combine alcohol and cocaine. So it parang yung effect niya mix na, no? <laughs> okay. Stimulant drugs increase alertness and mobility. This includes caffeine, nicotine, cocaine, amphetamine, and ecstasy. So uh, there is a table here that can summarize the different types or commonly used drugs and its effects. I hope you can study more into this. And that is the end of my presentation. I hope you've learned something. And please read the book. You, know, you can actually learn more by reading the book. Thank you so much for listening. Have a great day.